This is a short presentation on the importance of building peak bone mass as an adolescent and how it can affect bone mass as we age. Peak bone mass is the highest level of bone mass achieved as a result of normal growth. And it determines resistance and susceptibility to osteoporosis and fractures. Peak bone mass is the result of many factors, genetic, racial, nutritional, lifestyle, and physical exercise. Although peak bone mass is achieved by around age 25 to 30, 40 to 50 percent of bone mass is achieved by the age of 18. At skeletal maturity, women have 10 to 15 percent lower bone mass than men. On this graph, we can see the trajectory of bone growth and bone loss with age of men and women. Bone mineral density is depicted on the left side of the graph in grams per centimeter squared. Age is depicted on the horizontal line. And it shows that we have developed peak bone mass by our early 20s. From there, bone mass declines for both men and women, but with a more rapid decline for women at menopause, often between the age of 45 and 50. In men, the loss of bone mass is slower, but by age 65 or 70, men and women are losing bone mass at the same rate, although the level of bone mass is still higher in men. This graph is interesting because it identifies bone loss by gender and race. It depicts bone loss of the hip in milligrams per centimeter squared. African-American men and women tend to have more peak bone mass in their 20s than white Caucasian men and women. So that by the time they age, they can sustain bone loss longer before going into the osteopenic or osteoporotic range. And this indicates a lower bone density than is average for age. And it increases the risk for fracture. This higher risk level of bone density begins just over around 800 milligrams per centimeter squared. Other ethnicities of color, like Hispanic and Asian people, also tend to have a slightly higher peak bone mass than Caucasians. Many factors can affect peak bone mass and can reduce the full normal genetic potential. This graph represents how the amount of bone mass during its peak potential can be diminished by environmental factors, such as heredity, exercise loading, calcium, and vitamin D intake. With less bone mass achieved by mid-20s, one will enter into the high fracture risk phase earlier in life. So peak bone mass can predict osteoporosis and lifelong fracture risk. So we want to encourage our teens to consume adequate calories, calcium, and vitamin D. And we want to encourage frequent weight-bearing exercise. We know that high-impact forces are osteogenic. They increase bone mass. And it's partly due to this piezoelectric effect, which happens when bone produces this electrical charge once mechanical stress is applied to it. And it's the basis for Wolf's Law, which states that bones will adapt based on the stress or demands placed on them. 
we know that ground reaction forces plus the pull of muscles on bone leads to enhanced bone building during adolescence and beyond. But what can we do if we're already adults? Well, here are some risk factors that you can control as an adult. You can quit smoking, since we know smoking is correlated to higher bone loss. You can achieve or create a more active lifestyle because we can still remodel bone as an adult. We wanna avoid anovulation in our reproductive years. Uh, and this is often caused by excessive exercise or eating disorders. And we wanna monitor our medical issues and ensure that medications are kept in check with regular testing. That way we can keep these medical conditions under control and avoid excessive bone loss because of them. So should we get a bone density scan? When should we find out what our bone density is as an adult? The National Osteoporosis Foundation recommends a bone density or DEXA scan based on age, fracture, loss of height, and they only recommend that a woman test her bone density at age 65 unless she has risk factors. But many people with no risk factors have low bone density before age 65. Low bone density even to the point of osteopenia and osteoporosis, putting you at greater risk of fracture. So if a woman did not build peak bone mass in her 20s due to inadequate environmental factors, then perhaps her bone mass at menopause will already be in that osteopenic or osteoporotic level. So it begs the question, should women consider getting a bone density test at menopause? We know that now, Testing, lifestyle modifications, and supplements are all ways that we can be proactive against bone loss as we age. In summary, peak bone mass is achieved by age 20 to 35. Gender and race impact peak bone mass and environmental factors affect peak bone mass. Teens, should focus on diet and exercises to help build up a strong reservoir of bone during their bone building years in order to have enough bone in older age during that more severe bone loss. Adults can control modifiable risk factors and consider a bone density test at menopause because the sooner you discover your bone density baseline, the sooner you can develop a plan for the future. Thank you. For more of an in-depth look at osteoporosis, scoliosis, hyperkyphosis, and other spinal conditions, join us for our Polestar online course, Scoliosis and Spinal Conditions Pilates Master Course. Coming soon, once we have all the edits completed. Thank you.